some work. So here overlap is there because this water I am marking in green color. That territory was initially occupied by Pakistan and then that is donated to China or given to China. So this territory is under control of Pakistan. So we are calling this as POK, this as COK. And whatever the remaining that we have somewhere around less than 70 kilometer river Indus is practically under control of India. Whereas on paper we have 700 kilometer part and then river Indus enters in Pakistan uh, where actually supposed to be great Indian desert is there. That is desert of third. But because of river Indus that region becomes fertile. The most fertile region. This is the thing, this is the importance of river Indus. That's why in Vedic literature also we are getting tremendous importance of river Indus. Now, uh, we are discussing Indus system. Say, river Indus is different and river Indus system. System is consisting of tributaries, then earlier streams also they are considered, then distributaries also considered say, uh, say for example river submerge, uh, somewhere flowing from here. Now river submerge is called as tributary of river Indus, whereas this portion from here to here, whatever we have a branch, we are calling this as distributary. So tributary and distributary. Tributary means there is confluence and then river flows. Two tributaries cause river to get bigger in size. Whereas distributary partitioned off the water of river. So practically speaking, just observe here that only this much part we are saying that this river Indus is intact. First, it is gaining water through its distributaries, uh, sorry, through its tributaries, and then there is distributary for that. Now, uh, river, uh, when we are calling river system, river system is getting uh, all that uh, we are saying tributaries, distributaries, and rivers. That all. Now, if you are talking of only India, not Pakistan, then 90% water through rivers, they are going to Bay of Bengal here, whereas remaining water is going to Arabian Sea. Now, Indus system, that is consisting of tributaries, distributaries of river Indus, uh, river Indus is rising beyond Himalaya system. So if we are calling this part as Himalaya, then just observe this is greater Himalaya and this is Kailas range. So beyond Himalaya system, that is before Kailas, <coughs> there is origin of this system. River Shok, Sh uh, Shigar, Gilgit, they are main tributaries of river. Now, they are joining in Jammu and Kashmir. Then onwards the river enters in Punjab of Pakistan where uh, different rivers from Punjab they are Ali, Satlam, Jhelum, Chinab and Bias they are directly or indirectly having confluence with river Indus. Now uh, whatever that join that is there in Pakistan and so we are considering these rivers as main rivers in India but it is after entering in Pakistan they are joining to this river Indus. Now, uh, before Karachi, it is having distributary also and at mouth, mouth means the uh, position where river is entering into sea, there we are having delta land. Uh, now, keep in mind, in Greek language or Greek script, they are having two deltas. So, first delta, that is denoted by triangle and this is capital delta, whereas this delta, uh, somewhat shaping D. This is small delta. So, when triangle is observed here, just uh, like that, that rivers getting distributaries, we are getting triangular shape. 
So that triangle shape is island are observed that we are calling as delta land. In Sanskrit, the word is more correct. That is Tri Bhuja Pradesh. Tri, tri, uh, tri, Bhuja sides. So having three sides. So this is delta land or Tri Bhuja Pradesh. That is there. Now, <coughs> this is the reason that Pakistan is having very high fertile land because all these river in the system is main system for Pakistan. No doubt, it is important system in Himalayas. And as part of river Indus and system, keep in mind, Saplaj, Ravi, Chinam, Chelam, Bias, these rivers are there in India. And so we are studying out first important system as river Indus. Truly, we have to say, Indian system, we have to focus on next river system, that is Ganga. Now we have name as Ganga. But in English it is pronounced as Ganges. So river Ganges system or river Ganga system. That is the most important system in India. 25% total area of present India is under drainage system of Ganga. Say I am using word system of Ganga. That includes river uh, again system means tributary and distributary. Both we have to consider. Now, <coughs> Ganga is having origin at Gangotri. Uh, it's very easy to remember. Yamuna is having origin at Yamunotri. Ganga is having origin at Gangotri. But practically speaking, two rivers or two main streams are there. They are forming river Ganga. But still we are saying that river Bhagirati, that is the main stream of Ganga, that is the original stream. But practically speaking, two streams are there. One is Bhagirathi and second one is Alaknanda. These two streams in Himalaya region causing origin of river Ganga. Now uh, Bhagirathi is having origin on Gangotri glacier. You are aware glacier. Glacier is river form because of movement of ice. And so this is an origin at Gangotri glacier. And then uh, we are saying that Alaknanda and Bhagirathi confluence is there and it is called as Deva Praya. It is not Praya that is Allahabad. So it is called as Deva Praya where confluence is there and then onwards we are calling that as Ganga. Now this is most important river, sacred rivers in Hindu religion. There is tremendous importance for river Ganga. That's why many sacred places, places of pilgrimage, they are always there on the banks of Ganga. So Gangotri itself, then various other spots like Prayag, Kashi, that is Varanasi and so on. They are situated on the bank of river Ganga. So Ganga river is important not only for physical world, for, but for spiritual or that is called as religious purpose. The river Ganga is very very important. Now, <clears throat> other tributaries of this Ganga river, there are Ghagra, Gandak, Kosi, from north side. North side means from Himalayan territory or Shivalik territory, these rivers are coming. Whereas from south side also, as we discussed, that this is having plateau and this movement is also there. And so, south side also, rivers are coming to Ganga. Uh, they are particularly Damodar and Shon. These rivers from south. Now, important tributaries of Ganga, they are obviously first one is Yamuna. Now, Chambal, Betwa, and Ken. Now, practically, if you say this is also coming from south, actually from north, but later on the confluence is there from south. And then river rivers from Rajasthan. They are flowing Rajasthan, MP, they are flowing there. They are Chambur, Betwa and Kim. This system is Ganga system tributaries. Now here onwards we are having distributary, one of the important distributary of river Ganga that is called as river Kugli. The famous a city that Kolkata or Kolkata that is there on bank of river Hooghly. 
it is not exactly on coastal line but just uh, close to coastal line the kolkata or kolkata city is there this is uh, on bank of river hugli so this is distributary of river ganga now river ganga is having confluence with river brahmaputra not yet shown but that is there in bangladesh and then vast delta land is produced part of that delta land is there in india that is in west bengal and major part of that delta land is there in bangladesh or uh, in british rule it was called as east bengal try to recollect partition created by lord curzon uh, anyway that is history again we are focusing on next system that is river brahmaputra from uh, this is third important system in river uh, himalayan river system now river brahmaputra uh, is of very very doubt and debatable question in earlier days because many people were having doubt that river brahmaputra that is supposed to be river sangpo and after careful observations and experiments britishers concluded that yes river brahmaputra is actually river sangpo in tibet because uh, it is changing its path or direction continuously say from manasarovar there is origin from close to manasarovar there is origin of river brahmaputra it flows like that uh but that means in initial phase it is flowing westward uh, sorry uh, it is flowing eastward from west to east then at arunachal pradesh it suddenly change of direction and become southward and then eastward and then it enters in here where again it is taking sharp turn acute turn and there is confluence of ganga and brahmaputra where uh, that region is there in bangladesh so first change south east word uh, sorry south west word then towards south now here this part is not there in india this part is there now in china but in old days it was called as tibet where the name of river that is called as yar lung song po i am revising the name of river is yar lung song po or simply we can consider song po so this is the river's name in china or tibet territory whereas when it enter in india it is having another name uh, not directly we are calling that as brahmaputra but it's having name dihan then it become brahmaputra so these are the names so river identified by name as yarlung sangpo or sangpo then dihan and brahmaputra these three rivers are the same because of their origin and uh, nature we are having different names over there now from north side subhanishri kamen dhanasiri manas and tista these rivers are joining from north burhi tihan disan kopoli these rivers are joining from south to brahmaputra now uh, this river system is giving three important major part now brahmaputra is particularly focused in uh, what we are calling as nepha that is northeast frontier area or uh, seven sisters or rather i am saying that uh, states towards east part of india that is more in focus and then it is main river in bangladesh now these three systems we are calling as himalayan systems now we are coming to the plateau region so from here onwards we are getting plateau region we are focusing now on plateau region of india